Amen. So what a beautiful evening for us to get together in this place. Uh, this is a special day for, for us, Christian, not only Christian actually, including Jewish. This is the month of uh, Aviv, or the month of uh, April, where exactly we celebrate uh, Passover. And uh, as we do remember from the scripture, what took place in Egypt was uh, the shadow. And Jesus Christ is the reality or the fulfillment of what is taking place uh, uh, back in Egypt. So we are blessed to be called the children of God. We are blessed to be part of the Abraham family. We do remember how our father has given a promise to Abraham that will bless him and all the nation of the earth will be blessed for him. And Jesus Christ has to come so that that promise was given to Abraham will be fulfilled to the Gentiles. And we are all blessed to be part of that kingdom. So, and uh, the scripture says in Deuteronomy 16, 16, as the people of God, they always got together for celebration of Passover or other feast. And God is giving the recommendation for them to bring the offering. So we bring an offering. Uh, you are not obliged actually uh, to bring your offering. offering. And uh, unless you are convinced through the Holy Spirit, the Bible says God loves the cheerful giver. So it has to come from your heart. So we prefer to give from our heart. So we collect our offering before we go to the message. Uh, I can't wait actually to, to talk about uh, what the Lord has put in my heart. So let's uh, get ready and to collect uh, our offering. If you, you need the envelope or you need pen, uh, you can just uh, Raise your hand and the ashes to help you. Do we this? Yes, yes, you can collect the flame. Let's pray for our offering. But dear Father, we thank you because we receive from you and we are returning this portion of what you have blessed us with. But dear Lord, we are praying that your blessing continue to flow in our life as we are coming for our seat before your presence. But dear Father, we uplift our loved ones, those who couldn't afford to give. We pray, Almighty God, that your blessing to reach them in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God, it's good. Uh, I have an uh, interesting topic to share with you uh, this evening, this place. Uh, but before I give you the topic that uh, I'd like to share with you, uh, I'd like to tell you a story. Uh, I like telling a story. And, uh, uh, I, uh, I do remember every time when I want to tell a story at home, and always my wife would jump and say, let me tell my story. Because she loves telling stories. Well. And she always tell me, say, you know that I uh, tell story better than you. I say, well, no problem. That's why we are, we are, we are two. Uh, so it was uh, back in uh, France, in the city of uh, Bordeaux, 
uh, the city of Bordeaux, they were building, uh, they were building a bridge, the bridge to co you know to help uh, the cars and pedestrians to travel from one place to the other. And the engineer who uh, designed the plan and were guiding us to the plan, his name was uh, Gust Gustav uh, Eiffel. Eiffel. E-I-F-F-E-R. So, as they were building the bridge, so it happened that one of the, the worker actually, is, you know, it was out of safety, he was operating without safety, and as a result, he fell, he fell off uh, probably uh, five meters. Five or fifty meters, uh, I don't remember. He fell off. Uh, it was was terrible. And uh, the engineer, when he looked at one of the workers, fell down, and he jumped himself with his suit. With his suit, he jumped after him, and people, no one could believe because it was risky. The guy that he don't fell off, the probability was because it was really. Higher. The probability was that guy, he can die. And for him, he jumped with his suit, with his shoes, just to go and save the guy. So he fell from the water, yes, from the bridge, from the bridge to the water. So they run to the other side to wait and if to see if they will be, if they will come out or not. Uh, I hope you can switch off also my phone. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so as they were, they have to run to the other side of the show, you know, to see what will happen. As they were waiting, it took a while and they found that, uh, you know, uh, Gustav Eiffel was bringing the other guy to the show and he saved the life of the guy. So the engineer put his life on the line, uh, on line for someone. And uh, many of you that been in Paris, uh, you remember the tour I fell. So he is the one also that designed that tour, and he's still standing in our day. In our day. So the same engineer was uh, one of the great engineers. And uh, this is the same illustration of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for you and I. So I believe that if you and I, we got together this evening, this place, is because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. The scripture is telling us that the preaching of the cross is a foolish for those who are perish, but for us, for you and I, it's a power. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we can just uh, stand up <clears throat> as we are about to pray before we start uh, our message. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise and we adore you. Lord Jesus Christ, we declare by your word that the three your children. They live not by bread alone, but uh, every way that coming from your mouth. Here we are into thy presence. So speak to us. Instruct us. Correct us, Almighty God. In the name of Jesus, we declare by your word that you send your way and your word heal our disease. Amen. Let your word heal our disease. Let your word restore our life in Jesus' mighty name. We are praying. We come, on, we come against every mountain that is standing ahead of us. Every mountain of destruction. Every mountain of the enemy trying to stop us to receive word from you. We cast out of this place in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Holy Spirit, take a full control and let the name of the Father be glorified in our life. In Jesus' mind, they were praying. Amen. 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 May take it, please. So uh, I have a topic that uh, I'm sharing with us uh, this evening, the seventh statement of, of Jesus Christ on the cross. The seven statements of Christ on the cross. So we, we got together in this place uh, Know, to celebrate Passover. I prefer using the word Passover because uh, as uh, many of you are aware, uh, Easter is not uh, a biblical, it's a very pagan. And uh, the scripture is 
warning us not to celebrate uh, those pagan priests, not even the owner of our God. So, uh, in last year we went through the teaching about it. And uh, uh, in my in my language, when there's no uh, there's no way the uh, Easter actually, we have uh, Passover. Even the French, the French there's no Easter. There's only back, which is Passover, and Spanish as well, Pascua, right? Pascua, Pascua, yeah. which is uh, is Passover. And uh, so uh, we are here to celebrate a Good Friday. Why good? Probably we'll discover it soon. Why we call it. Uh, uh, Good Friday. I do remember that that evening was a, or was a, wasn't really uh, a Good Friday. It was a dark Friday because people were without hope, desperate. But guess what? Mm -hmm. Jesus is a game changer. Amen. Jesus is a game changer. Amen. So he came in this world to change the game. That's why the scripture is telling us that if the enemy knew that by crucifying Jesus Christ on the cross, you will be for his own destruction, will never put our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. We thank God because only our God is omnipresent. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go straight away to our first passage in the book of Luke, chapter 23, from verse 22 to 45. I would like us to read together as a uh, castle. So, I have a prayer for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Oh, 23, sorry. 23, 22. I'm here, Papa. There were also two other spirits, the land and the pain to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, they were crucified in the and the criminals, one by one, and the other by the other side. Then Jesus said, Father, do you believe them for the men who know what they do? And the people are still looking on. But even the rulers who did them say, He saved others, let him save himself, if it is Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine. And saying, If you are a king of Jews, save yourself. And the inscription for the was written. This is the kingdom of Jesus. Then one of the criminals who were away and If you are Christ, save yourself and us. But the other ones who were away and say, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are the same condemnation? And we need to trust you. For we will see the glory of the Lord of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when we come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, I show you the same thing today, and you will be in the paradise. Now it was about the sixth hours, and there was darkness for all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the moon was not shown in the moon. Yeah. Now, thank God for His word. So, our first point actually we will talk about it is. The first saying of Jesus Christ on the cross, Father, forgive them. We have seen the scripture. Jesus Christ was condemned to death. 
They took him to play in the place called Calvary. As they arrived at the Calvary, Jesus wasn't alone. It was a custom for the Roman, you know, to kill the criminal and by killing them, by crucifying them on the cross. It was it wasn't a new thing that was, was taking place. But on that evening, Jesus wasn't alone. There were two criminals who were with him. One is right side and one is left side. And all were crucified on the cross. We have seen the scripture, how people, they were blaspheming Jesus Christ. They were insulting him. How they saw they were insulting him, asking him, you have saved people. You have done miracle now, set yourself free. When they were insulting him, women they were crying, he asked them not to cry for him, but to cry for themselves by calling them daughter of Zion. Mm. Do not lament about me, but about yourself. If you read up, up huh? 23 from 26, you see how Jesus Christ was talking to them, telling them not to cry for him. Now, there's something special take place. Think about it. Everybody, they were insulting him. But Jesus Christ, they saw they were insulting him. But he replied and asked him, Father, say, Father, forgive them. Because they do not know what they are doing. Father, forgive them. None of them ever asked Jesus to forgive them. None of them even admitted that what we are doing was wrong. But Jesus Christ himself, he prayed the Father to forgive them for everything they were doing. What this declaration is teaching you and I? Because we got to get we got together in this place. Yes, we do always remember what Jesus has done for us, not only for Good Friday, but it's part of us, it's part of our journey, that every day we do remember about what Jesus has done for us. We'll never forget about salvation. But what this passage is teaching you and I, if Jesus has forgave us and what you and I should do, if Jesus asked Father to forgive them, and we do, we do remember also one more case of uh, Stephen. When Stephen, in the Acts chapter, chapter 7, verse 16, Stephen was preaching about Jesus, preaching about Jesus and uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were there, they were planning to kill him. He didn't know what he was preaching about Jesus Christ, about salvation of Jesus Christ. And didn't take much time, he was seized. And as they were stoning him, the scripture says, look up in the heaven, he saw heaven was open. But one of the statements to Stephen said, Father, forgive them. Now, in our life, as you and I, we are living, one thing we have to know, that people will offend us. People will offend us. They did offend you in the past, and they will do it probably now and in the future. There are people who will abuse you in your life, who are verbal abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. And some who will still carry on that burden, the treatment that you receive in your house, at side, at school, and different places. What Jesus Christ has done in the cross, it was powerful. It was the powerful declaration, not only for the Father to do it, but so you and I also we can do it. We do remember as he, he said, he spoke unto us, that when we're praying, we have to ask the Father to forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. So as you and I, we got together in this place, is there anyone in your heart 
Is there any crime that was done against you that you're still holding to? You can't release the person. Forgiving, it does good not only, it does good to us, actually. Think about it. That someone who ever, you know, someone offended you and you are still living that grudge, or you in a relationship, the person in a relationship had dumped you, treated you bad, and you always, when you think about that person, the anger is there, and while probably that person is, you know, relaxing somewhere, probably is uh, in a holiday in Hawaii, and look at you yourself, you're still holding to that grudge. And who is suffering? It's not him, it's you. So when Jesus is telling us to forgive, it's good to us ourselves. Not to those who offended us, but to us. So we have to forgive because God has forgiven us and we have to forgive those who have offended unto us. Jesus has done that to those who offended him. And this is was the first way of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross to forgive. And the second word of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross <clears throat> Today you will be with me in the paradise That was his second word Now think about it those two criminals, one is left side, one the other in the right side. And one were condemning him, said that, no, why can't you save yourself and save us? And, save us? and the other one replied, for you, you don't have a fear of God. You and I, we are entitled to die because we have, to, we have sinned. But this man never sinned. He hasn't done anything. And after rebuking, he is made to turn to Jesus, asking Jesus, Lord, remember me when you be into thy kingdom. Please remember me. This man, criminal, number one, he recognized the div divinity of Jesus. Because to call him Lord, to, to ask him to remember him, so he knew the scripture. Just think about it. You know, I want you, I want us to, to go, you know, put ourselves in, in, in the shoes. These people that were shouting the crucifying Jesus, they were the same people a week ago. They welcomed him in Jerusalem. The week ago, they put the cloth, the week ago. They were shouting, celebrating. Hosanna. To the king of kings, to the son of David. And week after, they've changed. Why? Because they couldn't understand the plan of divine plan, the plan of God. When they asked Jesus Christ to the Pons Pilate, are you a king? He didn't reply as he said to say, my kingdom is not of this world. Because if it was of this world, my army would come and he would a fight for me. We do remember Jesus Christ when he entered Jerusalem, entered Jerusalem but for donkey, not, the, not using horse. So every king who come for donkey, so that king shows that he's coming, he coming for peace. The king who comes for a horse is coming for war, for fight. But Jesus came for peace. But even though they have seen the sign, the high priests they should understand because they were on the teacher of the law and they, they know what the law said. But all of them, they were in confusion. All of them, they were scared, probably scared of the Roman. what the Romans going to retaliate when they see how the crowd were coming to Jesus. Because another week ago before the entrance of Jesus Christ in Jerusalem, Jesus had directed Lazarus. So, Oh, the crowd, 
They were going after Jesus. So none, none of them were after the Pharisees or the high priest. So one of the reasons was also jealousy. And the other reason was they were scared because Robin, they were really evil. In the case of a resurrection, the woman will come and the result will be catastrophic. But although all of them they have a plan, but God also has his own divine plan. We have seen this prisoner recognize the authority of Jesus Christ, recognize the divinity of Jesus Christ, and saying, Remember me when you'll be in the kingdom, your father. And Jesus says, Truly I tell you, today you'll be with me in my father's kingdom. <laughs> now, I'd like to pause here for the moment. I do remember our last week Bible study, we came across the question of when we die, where we usually go. And uh, we discussed about it uh, in our Bible study, where we usually go. There are two different type of teaching. Other teaching is, you know, our soul goes to the place of, of rest and walk to wait until the time of uh, rapture, resurrection time. But now, what the Bible says? Jesus says that this man, I'm telling you today, you'll be with me in the paradise. And the passage of, uh, of, of Stephen, when Stephen, the way killing Stephen, what Stephen says, say, he saw the heaven were open and the sound of man, and Jesus Christ was standing. Apostle Paul is the one who was saying to people, who said, I'm ready to go. I'll give you the passage, 2 Corinthians. If you can read the 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, please. We are confident, yes, we are pleased rather than to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So there are only two places for us as a Christian. So if you are not in this planet, so you are going to be with the Lord. There are two places. There's a teaching of uh, Jehovah Witness and uh, the Seventh Days of Atlantis, who always says that no, and our soul goes to a place of rest, no one goes to heaven. But the scripture, mm -hmm. Jesus is the one who knows the way. It's not our theology. We want to understand Christianity. We want to understand heaven. Jesus is the answer. Mm -hmm. And the word of God is the answer. Yeah. So, hmm? if we are physically in this place, you know, as Apostle Paul says in other previous uh, passage, probably Philippians, as I'm talking, if you can look at that, Philippians chapter 1, verse 23, please. I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. I have a desire to go, to stay with you, or to go to be with Christ. So, the death, the, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ is showing us that we do not fear death because we know that when we die, where we usually go. Apostle Paul says that for us that would be like a pagan because we know when we die, where we go. We go to Jesus. And if you read this passage further, he says, but I would rather stay more with you so that I will continue teaching you the word of God, so that you'll continue to equip you with the word of God, so that you'll continue to write other books that you and I were using today. Jesus Christ, in the book of Matthew, chapter 17, when he took Peter, 
John, James, to the mountain of transfiguration. And when we when they arrived at that place, we have seen <coughs> what's happened, the appearance of Moses, the appearance of Elijah. It's not me, it's Francesco who asked me, I just put 23. Yes, it's cold? Yeah, you can turn it. Oh, for 24? So you did 25? So in transfiguration we've seen the presence of Elijah and Moses. Where do you think they came from? They come from uh, the place of rest? No, they came from heaven. They came from heaven. Because when you read the scripture, that glory, that glory was, was shining up on the, they came from heaven. The heaven is real. When we depart from this, we depart from this place, we go to heaven. There's no place between, or you are in between, you are waiting. No. There's no such place. On the, the scripture, when you, you read, uh, you read uh, the, uh, Daniel, we are not focusing on that one down today, but when you read Daniel, you will learn about that, Daniel 12. There are more to learn about where we usually go when we die. The other passage we can talk about it is uh, Lazarus. We, we do remember the story of Lazarus in Luke 16 with the rich man. What the scripture says, the rich man was, uh, you know, was in hell and Lazarus was in heaven in Abraham bosom. And then the rich man, he talked to Abraham, say, ask Lazarus, you know, to come and just uh, take, you know, a dip, you know, to bring the water to, to cool me, to cool me down. Because you know that attitude, because it was a rich man. What rich men do? do? They have people work for them. They command. If not probably as in lifetime, you can tell someone like Lazarus, go and do this and do that. And Lazarus will do it. And they are, there's another new movement actually uh, is arising and uh, you know nullifying or the nullification of hell. They say that hell, hell doesn't exist. There are plenty. They come with the theology that hell doesn't exist. Uh, some of uh, I'm not here to name, uh, you know, put the name of someone here, but it's quite uh, a lot at the moment that people, they believe that, no, it's not going to be heaven. Actually, it's not going to be hell. If it's not going to be hell, why Jesus says to come and die on the cross for us? Why Jesus says to talk about hell? Because there's no one who ever talk about hell than Jesus. And we know that uh, in, in Greek, when they talk about how, you know, Sheol and the others has a different meaning, it depends on the sentence. But the scripture is telling us that the hell is real. And now probably someone may confuse you one day, but I want to put you in better position. I want you to be aware, just believe that it exists because the Bible says, mm -hmm. and prepare yourself. Continue to nurture your relationship with Jesus so that one day you won't be deceived. Because if you believe that hell doesn't exist, so me, I can do whatever I want. I won't live the life of Christ. Jesus is the one who says in Matthew 7 13 to 14, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leading to destruction, and many enter through it. But because the narrow is the gate, and the way that leading to life, and only a few has found it. There's a lot of people who are taking broad. 
a lot of people who are abusing grace. They believe that they can come to Christ Jesus as long as they say that, yes, I do. But they don't want to repent. They haven't seen open for them. And I, I want you to be in a place where you believe in the Word of God, where you believe that hell exists. Because even if it doesn't exist, you have nothing to lose. But if you believe that hell doesn't exist, and you do because you do whatever you want, at the end, then you find yourself there will be of no return, you know. There's no return in hell. And in hell. Hell is a place of no return. We are living in a time that there's a lot of false profit. Regardless of the level of education, I've, 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 met, I've seen those who are carrying PhD, the doctors, they don't believe in the word of God. They don't believe. They are, they are lecturing, I have lect, uh, I came across of uh, hmm? books written by theologians, but they don't believe in God. And there are plenty. So, going back to this point, the guarantee that we have that when Jesus came to die for our sin, Jesus, he came to pay the price for us. Jesus came so that you and I will go to paradise. Jesus didn't tell the other guy that you, you've been in paradise with me. Just think about it. If heaven, also hell doesn't exist. And this man, one of the, the criminals went to heaven or to paradise. How about the other one? Where did he go? Why did you go see for if for hell does exist? Probably that's a question that we should ask ourselves. God wants you to be equipped with this way. And the fourth friend, the third story, the third one, the declaration that the Lord Jesus Christ made. Woman, here is your son, and son, here, here is your mother. Uh, if we can open the Bible, the book of John 19, 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple, whom he loved, standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Next, 27. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Amen. Amen. Now, there's one thing I want us to understand. Uh, in the book of uh, Matthew 13, 54. Can we go uh, Matthew 13, 54? Jesus had brothers and sisters. Are you aware of that, right? Jesus had brothers and sisters. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in the synagogue so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Next, is this that the captain son? The captain son. Is not this mother called Mary and his brothers James, jo Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Next. And his sister, uh, they are not all with us. Where then did this man get all these things? So one thing I wanted to understand, that Jesus Christ, even his own, even his own sister never believed him. His own brothers never believed him. Now, according to the culture, even the Jewish culture, uh, Jesus soon ordered uh, John to look after his mother. Why? Because 
She has her own children. But why Jesus has to bother? John, to look after her, his mother. And where was Joseph? Because Joseph is the one that he has to look after his wife. And it's, it's very clear that in this time, Joseph was no longer alive. Joseph, Joseph who had died, died away. So Joseph was out of the picture, was dead away. Yeah. You may ask me, which passage is he talking about? It? <laughs> there, there's no passage talking about it. There's no passage talking about it. Uh, hmm? God has given us also, you know, uh, Holy Spirit to understand. Yeah. And, uh, and probably we may ask another question, why the Bible never talk about the death of, of Joseph? Joseph wasn't biological father of Jesus. And they were right there. Hmm? They were led by the Holy Spirit, but they found that it wasn't important to write about it. But in this time, Joseph were no longer alive. Because according to Jewish culture, if Joseph was alive, he is the one that's going to look after his own wife. Now, going back to the brothers and the sisters, you know, he has brothers and sisters, but yet Jesus is asking John to look after his mother. When Jesus Christ were left behind. They were telling him that no, all your brothers and your your brothers and your your parents they are looking your family they are after you. What Jesus says, my fa my my father and my brother are those who have been the will of no, the will of my, of my father. So, sometime in life, you know, Jesus knew that John will take care of his mother better than his own brothers and sisters. I got a friend who is in America. And uh, yes, he has also been friend. But they talk to children. In the case of problem, talk to children that they have to look, you know, he talk to children, the first person they have to contact is me. But he has his own brother and sisters. Why? Because of the relationship we have and the way he consider me. The way he knows that even if he's not, he's no longer alive, the way I'll treat his children, that I'll treat them like my own, and he's aware of that. He's a long term friend. We know each other for a long time, but he trusts me more than the way he trusts his own brothers and own sisters. So Jesus Christ, he found out that John will take care of his parents very well better. And the other thing we have to understand, John, he was the only disciple he lived until old life. Although he went through persecution, but he never been martyred like the others. All of them were been martyred. So they were killed, except John. And I believe that God kept him alive for a reason, because he still had a mission to do. Now, you children, you are here, I want you to listen to me very well. Here, Jesus, who was taking care of his parent, taking care of his mother, he was going, he was suffering. Think about it. He was suffering, but still caring for others. Even the cross, he was suffering, but didn't care about what people are doing for him and asking people, asking the Father to forgive these people. And listen, and in this case now, his mother, who was praying, and without son, and asking John to look after his mom. So he didn't look at himself, but he was caring more for his mom. Probably you are here in this place, you don't have a relationship with your mom, your parent. You don't want to see them. Probably they've done something bad to you. And it's time for you to reconcile yourself, it's time for you to release them. And many of us, especially in our culture, you know, your parents, they raise you up, they help you. 
and you go, sometimes you have a culture of, you know, dumping people in the nursing home and we don't care for them. We don't know if they're eating, if they're treating them well or not. Caring. He didn't, he didn't look at himself as a caring for his parents. I want us to open up 1 Timothy 5 and 8. 1 Timothy 5 and 8. What the Bible says. 1 Timothy 5 and 8. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart. From a good conscience, from a good conscience and from sincere faith. From which some having stray have turned aside to idle talk. Is that what uh, what uh, really I want? Just give me a second. Uh, it's five. Let's multiply. First Timothy 5 8. This one you put it for as well? Was 5 8? No. It was 1 8. Yes. Oh, okay. This one was. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied what? The faith. And is what? He's worse than the is a Western unbeliever. So you are in this place. You don't respect your parent. Huh? Lack of respecting a parent that's seen. We've seen even at school, not only parents, even the teachers. There's a lot of students, they go at school, they abuse the teachers, and yet Christian. There's no place for Christians to abuse people that those who are in authority. It could be the police, it could be anyone in authority, the existing authority. We cannot abuse them because God has placed them in that place of authority. And especially our parents. Jazia, listen to me here. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus was dying, but was asking, was asking John to look after his mother. What the Bible says, children, honor your parents, because this is the first commandment of love, so that you may live long on earth. We are church, we are family church. We look after one another. John, John wasn't biological son of, of Mary. No. That what the Bible says. God says something. Jesus says that in Christian life we have new brother, new sister, new mom, new father. That means we are caring. So our way is to care for our loved one. If if I have someone close to me in the church that doesn't have someone, and I have to stand up for that person, if if you have to take him, is is a child life for a child life, I have to do it. I will still be close to that person until that person goes to be with the Lord. And there are so many, even children, they abandon their own parents. And some people, those who are not biological for the, the parent, but they are taking care of them up to the end of the journey. So this passage, look, Jesus is telling us that we have to look after our own. Because the Bible says, those who are not looking after their own, they are wasting the pagan. When we do celebrate, Resurrection. When we do celebrate the, 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 you know, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have to remember all the statement was done on the cross. 
and we have to apply it in our own life. When someone comes to Christian life, his family or family has been extended. So when I call you my brother, when I call you my sister, I will admit it. I will admit it. They put, they show me a watch and uh, probably have to I up for the time I have a lot to say that I have to I have because of time. And the fourth point is uh, the fourth point I want you to to know to know the fourth the fourth one. Eli 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 Lama Sabakan. This is the fourth statement on the course. Can we please open? We found it in the book of uh, Matthew 27, verse 46. And about the ninth hour, hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Well, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why Jesus says to cry, no. my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was suffering the second death. I say again, Jesus was suffering the second death. The second death. Do we understand about second death? That means separation with his father. He was experiencing separation. He was experiencing second death, separation between him and the father. Why? Because of the sin, our sin that Jesus was carrying upon him. We do remember what another criminal was saying to the others. Aren't you ashamed yourself? You and I have sinned, and this man without sin. So Jesus was blameless, without sin. But he was crucified because of your sin and my sin that was carrying on the cross. And at that time, it was separation. Why? Let's open our Bible in the Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. We hurry up as a we have to I have probably uh, 10 to 15 minutes to finish. For he made him, he made him who knew no sin to be seen for us, that we might become the righteous of God in him. So Jesus Christ, in the other way, God saw in in his only son, as a personification of all sin of humanity that Jesus was carrying upon him, which made, made our father to separate himself, himself, to abandon him at that, at that moment because of our sin that was carrying on the cross. That's why the Bible says, therefore, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus has set us free. Because Jesus has carried your sin and my sin on the cross of Calvary. And that, that's why we call Good Friday. Because of our freedom. Because of a price that was paid on the cross. There's no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus, because He has granted you and I His righteousness, He has justified you and I. There are some people that think that no justification comes from our own effort. No, that was a gift. That was a gift was given unto you when He carried, when He took all our sin, and He, he granted us His righteousness, He granted us His identity, and He took ours on the cross. So Jesus Christ 
as rich as the climax of war, of his suffering, it was so tense that no one, you know, a cold bait was so tense. Uh, let's uh, jump to the next point, which is one fifth. I'm faced. I'm faced. Jesus was faced. Then the soldiers were mocking at him. They, they have taken Baniga and giving him Baniga, and they were laughing, blaspheming of Jesus who was giving me Baniga because he was thirsty. And think about it. He was thirsty so that you and I won't be faced anymore. When Jesus said in the count of the four, the Samaritan woman, when Jesus says unto him, you know, I have a water of life. If you drink my water, you won't be faced anymore. I was talking about spiritual one, not, not physical water. I was talking about spiritual water. But once you have Jesus Christ, you won't be faced anymore. Because he is the gift of life. He is the one who come and take all our case. Remember when the passage that uh, we, we spoke about, about Lazarus, who was in heaven, and the uh, rich man in hell, he was asking Lazarus just to take a bit of, because he was thirsty, just, to, just a bit of, even dot to his mouth because he was thirsty. But as for you and I, we won't be faced because hell is not our place, mm. but heaven is our place. Amen. So it's not too late for those who haven't made the commitment yet to follow Jesus Christ. This is the call that we have before Jesus Christ. Some of them may think that we have enough time. We, want, we don't want to take our walk with Jesus Christ seriously. We just continue to live our life. You know, the old life, the Bible says, if someone Christ Jesus is a new creature, the old thing has gone, everything becomes new. So we are free. So we are free. We are ready to forgive. Even if our offender, they don't ask us, sorry. We are free because none of the offender asked Jesus to forgive them, neither uh, Stephen. Yeah. He forgave them. And we have to forgive those who have offended us. Even the church. The church is like a home, it's like family. There's a lot of people who left the church. Why? Because someone told him or her a word and never liked that word and left, left the church. Sometimes that person never knew about it. A lot of people, they, they don't even talk about it, just leave, just, they will just leave the church. No. The same way when we're leaving the family, things can happen. Someone probably uh, who was beaten by mosquito, 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 mosquito. So, because you know, you 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 never know. The same way in the family, some people they are moody people. You know. When they wake up, they, they have a day. Other day, probably if they sleep on their left side, they don't talk to you. Somehow, they wake up with attitude. Even for own husband, they will show attitude. Wife, they do that. And uh, it's happened. And uh, some people also, they come to church, may show attitude. You have to let it go. Because when it happens, the family will let it go. And the church also will have to let it go because it will happen. If it never happens, it will happen. So we are talking about first, coming back to first. Now, what are you first of? Drugs? What are you first of? Alcohol? What are we first of? Jesus was thirsty, so that you and I won't be thirsty anymore. Amen. We won't be thirsty of sin anymore. 
What are you afraid of? Pornographic? What are you afraid of? <clears throat> this is a question that each of us, we, 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 we have to ask ourselves. You know, there are people that they have idols in their life. Idols. You know, they can't wait to read you know, that person, you know, what that person you know, is writing, what that person is doing. You are faced with everything that you, is not, is ungodly that you allow in your life. Jesus was faced so that you and I won't be faced anymore. He came to give us the water of life. Himself is that water. Jesus came to set us free from gambling. He came to set us free from every type of sin. That was his mission, the course. And let's go to the fifth, the sixth one. Uh, it, Jesus shouted that it's finished. It finished. Tetelestai. This is a Greek word. It finished. This word we're using to use in the tribunal. Like when you owe someone or you owe the state and you paid off and then they give you a paper. That paper they give you, the letter they give you, the, the last time, that means it's finished, it's done, it's still. And you shouted that it's done, it's finished. So this is Luke, we're not going to read that passage, you can write it down, Luke chapter 14, verse 28. Jesus is shouted that it's finished. Do you know, uh, I usually, uh, when I start my day or day before, I have uh, my to-do list. And uh, I usually do it so that I won't run, you know, I won't forget anything. I make sure, and during the day, I'll do my best to make sure that I've done everything. And often, I don't finish off my list. I have to carry on the next day. But this is what's different. Jesus Christ came and he's done all his assignment. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said, it's finished. You know, uh, all of us, we are aware of the word atonement, right? Atonement. You know, Old Testament word, atonement, cover. This is what was using uh, in a temple, the atonement. When someone has not seen the atonement to cover. But Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, he came not only, some people use that Jesus is an atonement. He did not, not, not only to come to cover, but he came, he came actually to take away Jesus' atonement for our sin, he came to put away, not only to cover, but to put away. The Old Testament, they, they used to use the blood of animals. And remember, the blood of animals were only to cover the sin, but wasn't taking the sin away, but just to cover. And it has to be done over and over, over and over. But he came to take away, to put away all our sins. The cross. The last word, the seventh word, said that you found it in the Luke 23 46. Into thee I, I command my spirit. When Jesus had cried out with loud voice, he said, Father, into your hand I commit, I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last breath. So the Bible says unto us to cast all our cares unto Jesus because he cares for us. You know, our journey of life, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he did not only grant us salvation, but help us to understand that we do not fear anything. We do not fear death. Yet, as Apostle Paul says, that yes, I prefer to stay longer with you so that I'll continue to give you what I have, what I'm carrying. And the same way with you and I, we are living this earth. Death, remember, death is the enemy. The Bible says that, you know, the Bible says Jesus will seize the death at the end. So, as long as we are living here, 
we are in this planet for an assignment, mm -hmm. so you cannot go earlier. You cannot go earlier. So God wants you to live long so that you can tell the deeds of God in your life. Yes. Apostle Paul, when he was ready, he understood himself, said, I'm ready, I've been pulled out. Now it's time for me to go. He wasn't afraid of that because he knew where he was going. Do you know where you're going? The time we're living, we're living a very dangerous time that we see uh, many uh, discretion, uh, restriction has been put into place about Christians. And soon probably you see, uh, they will tell us what we have to say and what we cannot say. We do, not, we do not fear the world. We do not fear Satan. We do not fear death. Amen. Jesus came to conquer death. Amen. When we're talking about death, we're talking about separation between human being and God. So that death doesn't have power. When the Bible says that death doesn't have power in our life, we are talking about that second death, separation between us, because there's no, it will never be separation between us and the Father. Why? Because we have Jesus now in, in our life. He came and died for us. That's why we celebrate his death. That's why his death is a blessing for us. The blessing is his death is a power for us. The scripture is very clear. That the preaching of the gospel of the cross is a foolish for those who perish. But as for you and I, it's a power. Can we please stand up? I want us to close our eyes and whatever way you can do it, probably our worship team will come here. Whatever way you can do it, say something to the Father for sending our Lord Jesus Christ to come here with him. Say something to the Father. And say something to our Lord Jesus Christ. Who came and died on the cross for you and I. Say something to him. He is with you. He will never leave you and never forsake you. He's always with you. His hand is upon you. What can separate us with the love of Christ? It's not persecution. It's not the human being. It's not what you've been requesting the, the Father, and the Father has been delaying to answer you. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And I want you to pray if there's someone in your heart, someone who offended you, someone who done something bad, and you still have you still found hard to let go of that person. Tonight, that's a night that you have to let go of every wrong things were done for against you. Jesus Christ forgave his execution. The soldier who mocked him, the thief who insulted him, the leader of, the, of, of, of Judaism, who were bailer, who had treated him with animosity, he forgave them. Jesus is the propitiation of our sins. The Bible is telling us not to seek vengeance. The vengeance belongs to God. Do not seek vengeance, but let go. Let God do the vengeance on our behalf. Think about your parent. What's your relationship with your parent? Jesus commanded his, his mother under the care of his disciple John.
Where is your father? Where is your mother? other guilt things, you've been living guilty conscious of something that you have done in the past and Satan has been visit, visiting you, reminding you about something bad you've done and God wants you to know that Jesus has forgave you. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that you will have to let it go. Let it go. Of someone that you treated badly, of your parent probably you insulted. If you offended someone, I urge you to ask forgiveness. Is that your parent? Is that your friend? That every time you think about him or her, you don't feel at peace anymore. Let it go. Let it go. The scripture is telling us in 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 18, Jesus Christ came to reconcile us with the Father. He reconciled us through his death. And he reconciled, he came to reconcile us with one another. And he has given us a ministry of reconciliation. So therefore, we cannot live in animosity, in hatred, in bitterness. Let it go within a family, within a friend, with everyone. Let it go. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise and worship you. We adore you. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for coming here on earth. Oh, you are without sin, sinless, but you suffered for our sin that you have carried, Almighty God. You abandoned the cross. You suffer for us. The ground were case, Almighty God, because of us, because we have sinned. 
The nature in sin, but human beings are sin, oh my God, and they ground to a case. Lord Jesus Christ, you shed your blood, your blood in the ground, so that the ground of my God be redeemed. We have redeemed us, we have redeemed the world, we have redeemed the ground, dear Lord. You have set us free. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We praise that we adore you. Lord, Holy Spirit, the one who resurrected our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. We are praying that you dwell mightily and powerfully in the life of each one of us this, this evening in the name of Jesus. Manifest thy presence, thy glory. And now lift everyone who is standing in this place. Everyone who has been suffering for sickness and disease. I'm standing against every mountain of sickness and disease. Every mountain of cancer. Every mountain of diabetes. Every mountain of blood pressure. Every mountain of dementia. Every mountain of heart disease. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cast out. I cast out. Lord Jesus Christ, you shouted that has been accomplished, has been done. You have done everything on the cross. Touch someone's life right now. Touch someone's life now in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, you are wounded for our transgressions. We are bruised for our iniquities. And the judgment of our peace was upon you, and by your strap we were healed. Oh, may the power of your strap, Almighty God, be effective in someone's life now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that you heal someone, restore someone's life right now. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I cast out sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and declare your healing to take place right now. In the life of my brothers and sisters, in the life of every child in this place, in the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we are praying, Almighty God, that you grant us, Almighty God, in your name. Restore every flesh, dear Lord. Restore every heart, heart dear Lord. Restore every broken heart. May every anxiety, depression, panic attack, mental disease be cast out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We praise the Lord. We glorify thy holy name. Lord, Holy Spirit, may you fill up, Almighty God, our cup. Let our cup be overflowing with your power, with your anointing now. Lord, Holy Spirit, touch someone right now. Fill up someone with your power, with your anointing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Father, because you are Alpha and Omega. We pray and believe this time of fellowship we have with one another. We're praying that will be a time of Mardi God, of unity, a time of blessings, the time of many dreams of Mardi God will come true. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we are praying. Amen.